everyone. Welcome to our Good Friday service today. We're so glad that you can join in this most significant day and event. Today's message, the title is The Great Exchange. The message of the cross is the most important truth that any person could ever hear. It's not just the focal point of the gospel, but it's the focal point of world history and eternity. The entire new covenant New covenant and its provision rests on the finished work of Jesus Christ. His crucifixion, death, burial, resurrection, victory over the devil, and his inheritance. Our faith is based on what he has accomplished through his cross. I want to deal, uh, give you the details of what Jesus did on the cross and why he did it. So let us revisit those three days that changed the world that changed the way how we relate to God. In fact, this is the most significant event for all believers. Why? Because all that we're going to experience is because of what happened in those three days that we believed. Many believers base their faith on what Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did during His life on earth. Yes, in Jesus' life, he was Emmanuel, God with us. He did some incredibly remarkable things. In his life on earth, we can see how God would look like in real life. He showed us what God was like. He was exact representation of God. Now, we don't have to guess what God would do in a situation, how he we show mercy because we've seen it in the scriptures how Jesus demonstrated mercy, how he uh, relate to people who are struggling with issues and challenges, how he would uh, confront or how he would deal with a person who is in sin and how he restores a person who has slipped away from their faith. Jesus was also God in the flesh. The Word became flesh, the Bible says. Jesus came not just to give us new information or truth about God. No, He came to do this. He came to reveal and to fulfill all that God had said in the scriptures. The tabernacle, the offering, the sacrifices, the festivals that was commanded in the Old Testament were only Symbols and types of the reality which is shown, revealed in Jesus Christ. So love was the core thing, the core motive of all that God did and God had said. I need to understand this as well. That when Jesus came to earth, he stripped himself of every divine attribute. As God, he was all-powerful, all-knowing, all-present. But he laid it aside to become fully man. Jesus showed us in his life what a man could do being full of the Holy Spirit and powered by the Spirit, yielded to the grace of God. If he believed who God said he is, that's why he told his disciples that the works I do, you can do also. And greater work shall you do because I go to the Father. He shows us what we could do, how we could minister and help people. You know, even though all these are, are valuable and it helps our faith, the truth is that none of these has anything to do with the conditions of how we relate to God in this new covenant. We are trying to participate in this covenant, this new covenant with God, but we don't even understand what happened during the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and how His Death, barrier, and resurrection works for us today. Our faith is not just based on the historical life of Jesus Christ. Our faith is based on the resurrected life of Jesus Christ. This is the most important thing that will produce an immovable, unshakable faith that is in your life. Now, I want you to understand something. When Jesus went to the cross, he participated in this great exchange. Everything that Jesus did on the cross was 
he did it by faith. In other words, he trusted God that even though he was going to become sin, and he's going to be separated from God, and he's going to take on all our punishment, he trusted God's promise to him that he would be raised into the newness of life. He looked to that promise that God had promised him and given him. He went to the cross. He endured the pain, the shame, the suffering, everything. Jesus went to the cross to become everything that we should have become as sinners. Jesus suffered everything that we should have suffered. He paid the price that we should have paid the price for. You know, there's a wonderful song that says, I owe a debt that I couldn't pay Jesus. He paid the debt he didn't owe. What a beautiful song. Jesus went to the cross by faith. In fact, when he was raised from the dead, he was raised by his own faith. <laughs> he believed his father's promise. He died for the sins of all humanity. He had paid a price for every man's sin. Now, so that now we can be reconciled back to God. That's why Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. To be reconciled means to enter into this great exchange. After Jesus' resurrection, Paul was imploring people to be participating in this great exchange. That means even though Jesus has done his part, we don't experience it until we enter into this great exchange. My life for his life. My sins for his righteousness. My punishment for his inheritance. Hallelujah. This is a trading place where Jesus takes all that we deserve, which is death, and punishment. And we get to take everything that Jesus deserved, which is life and inheritance. Hallelujah. Just as Jesus had to have faith to participate in this great exchange, we also had to have faith to participate in this great exchange. Otherwise, we do not experience the power and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in our life. The key thing that we need to realize is anything Jesus can pay for it himself, and he will have to pay for it. The Bible is very clear about this, that Jesus became sin and was separated from God. If he had done that, then we would have to be separated from God because of our sin. The Bible says very clearly he went, uh, he had to die the death, and it's not just a death, a uh, physical death which is separation from our body, but spiritual death with the separation from God and eternal death in hell. He had to do that. If he didn't do that, we would have to do it. We would have to go to hell and spend eternity without God. The Bible says he used his faith to be raised from the dead. Why? If he has not done that, then we would have to face it in our own faith. The Bible says he cast Satan out of heaven and it stripped him of all his power and authority. Why? So that because he had done it, we don't have to personally fight this battle and win this battle against the devil personally. The Bible says he sat down at the right hand of God and received his inheritance. Why? Because if he had not done that, then we would have to bring our own inheritance. Jesus used his faith to accomplish all that in this great exchange. And we too have to bring our faith to enter into this great exchange. Romans 5 verse 6 here says, For when we were still without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Isn't it amazing that Christ died for all of us, even before we made a decision to accept him and to give our lives to him. You know, some people think that God only does good things to good people, but you know, here it says, Christ died for the ungodly. God does what he does for the world because he loves the world. He gave it as a free gift to all mankind. Verse 8, it says, But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us all. Why did Jesus have to go to the cross? This is the place where we see God's love, God's amazing love, what God did for us when we didn't deserve it, when we don't even want it. Verse 9 says much more that having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. What does it mean to be justified by His blood? It means that we've been made righteous through the blood of Jesus. And so, because we are now in Him, we are delivered from the wrath of God. And because we are delivered from the wrath of God, we have peace with God. Now this covenant that we have with God is called a covenant of peace. And this covenant is not made between us and God. It's a covenant made between Jesus Christ, our Lord, with God. That is unbreakable. Because we are in Christ Jesus, we never have to fear that we will be rejected, that we will, that God will be against us. No, through Christ, His death and resurrection, when He was raised to life, when He conquered sin, death, and Satan, His victory becomes our victory. His inheritance becomes our inheritance. Hallelujah. Wonderful God that we serve. And now we become His beloved. We are sons and daughters. We are called and chosen. We are accepted and adopted and redeemed. We are victorious and we are overcomers. And we are complete in Him because of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. If you have your elements with you, We are going to do a communion together and we're going to thank God for His broken body and His blood that was spilled for us. The emblems that we hold in our hands, the bread and the cup symbolizes exactly that. God's life on the cross poured out for us. So we're going to participate in this communion right now. Communion is a fellowship with Christ. It is a shared experience with Christ. It's a shared life with Christ that we are participating in. Amazing. Until we experience the cross barrier and resurrection, our faith cannot receive the inheritance. And so let's wrap ourselves around the cross, this death, burial, and resurrection right now. Let's thank the Lord for everything that He has done for us. Thank Him. Thank Him, O oh God. Thank You, O oh Lord. We thank You for Your most amazing love for us. We thank You that You love us so much. You endured the cross. You suffered the shame. We thank You that You became sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God. We thank You that You took our curse and You became cursed so that we become the blessing. We thank you that you took every sickness and disease on your body. You were bruised by God so that by your stripes we are healed. We thank you, O oh God. Today we are delivered and blessed and protected and saved. And all that we are today is because of what you did. You paid the greatest price and the greatest sacrifice for our sins to give us this new life through Jesus Christ. Thank you. You rose again victorious. You defeated Satan for us so that we now are in you. We are victorious and we are overcomers. We thank you, O oh God. We ask you to bless the bread and cup as we receive you into our life. As we receive you into our bodies, in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we do just that? Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's a good Friday. We'll see you on the Resurrection Sunday. This is Easter. We are coming together again for a time of worship and to study and to know more about this resurrection life that we have received. 
So see you again soon. God bless you. If you like this message and you have been blessed by this message, please press the like button, share with as many people as possible so that this message can go out into the world. Thank you. God bless you. See you again soon.